I just remember the, the heaviness and just almost physical pain of going to the birth of a child who's not supposed to survive. I kind of felt like walking into the hospital was almost like walking onto a runway or something like that. You know, you just, you're waiting for something to just come and cream you. Heaviness is, is really the very, very, very best word that I can describe it. My wife was pregnant with our sixth child and she went to her 30 week ultrasound and she noticed that they were spending a, a, an inordinate amount of time around the, uh, the baby's heart. You know, sometimes you have like a feeling that something is just not right. Definitely had that feeling, but they wouldn't say anything to me. And then in the parking lot on the way home, you know, I called Ellie and I told him. And a little while later, probably half hour, 45 minutes later, the nurse called me and she said, there are major defects in the baby's heart. When I pressed her, I wanted to find out if the baby's viable. She said, no, I don't think so. I'm just like, this week is really busy. So Thursday, are they open on Thursday? So it's interesting, this foot, there you go, that's better. Maybe he was just tensing up on it. It seemed a little more tense than the other one. Do you stand him in a stander? We have a gait trainer. Oh, and he's good in that? Yeah, he doesn't walk correctly because he goes on his toes, you know? But at least he's moving around. But he can no, move that's around. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. He loves it, right? So when the baby was born, he cried. And that was quite surprising. And that was the first little piece of good news that we had had in several weeks. But after about an hour of x-rays, ultrasounds, the doctor took the oxygen nasal prongs off of his face and handed the baby back to me and said, this baby's not gonna survive to see sunset tonight. And I remember looking at this baby who's slightly violet and saying, come on, kid, make it past sunset. Make it past sunset. What's your name? What's your full name? Nisana. And what's your nickname? Ah. What does everybody call you? Missy. Missy what? Missy has Nissy is an incredibly happy kid. He, he really uh, takes everything that happens to him with, with a sense of humor and, and just kind of laughs it all off. He gets a kick out of absolutely everything. Somehow, so from deep, deep inside himself, he realizes that his life is truly a gift. Nis, tell me what you did in therapy today. I was walking back my... No, no, no. You were walking by yourself? No, 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 no. Almost? Did you do sidestepping? So basically, I was standing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was a ladder. Uh-huh. So I was going forward mm -hmm. to the door. Really? You were walking to the door? Yeah. Do you work so hard and try so hard? And you always are smiling about it and happy about it? Does that make me so proud? And Tati? And one day you're going to learn how to walk? It's going to be awesome. Yay. Good job. Whether it's good or bad, I really focus on day to day and I don't think so much big picture because I just, you know, this has taught me very much that you don't know what's going to happen. Do you have a marker? Can you show me a good way how to hold a marker? What would be a good way for him to hold a marker? Can you show me how you guys? Yeah. My end goal for him is independence in whatever way it's going to be whether it's using a wheelchair or a walker or crawling or, you know, but being able to be somewhat independent, to be able to play on his own. When they're talking about progress, what exactly does it look like? It, what, are we talking about actual walking independently? Or are we talking about walking with a the walker? They told me that his degree of 
disability of cerebral palsy, quadriplegic. Like, kids are not even where he is now. They're mostly laying in a bed. So we're kind of uncharted territory. To do my freezing dope. What do you do with that tube, Nessie? Are you hungry? Get my free tube. Just open it and then put the plug. Nessie has a unique oh internal anatomy. He has a single right ventricle. Besides for that, he has a unique GI system. So his yeah. stomach has a unique shape. So his internal organs are kind of all convoluted. There's two parts of it. There's the cardiac health stuff, and then there's the physical mobility stuff and the cerebral palsy that he has. That's another struggle that he has to deal with. The possibilities are all one large question mark. Do you ever feel bad for him? Yes. Um, you feel bad for your child anytime your child is not able to succeed at something. And you feel even worse for a child who is not able to join the rest of his, his peers in whatever it is. I definitely have moments or weeks where I'm all motivated and weeks where I'm just like, this is crazy and where are we ever, like, who know, who's gonna help me? And then I'll, you know, speak to somebody or he gives me a kiss. I'll, if I'm feeling down one day, I'll just pick him up and say, Nissy, give me a kiss. And he gives me a kiss on each cheek and mommy, you're the best. When you have the opportunity to be able to stand up for your child and to demonstrate that I truly am going to give you everything that I possibly can, and you know, to demonstrate to the rest of your children, we will fight for you. And that's that's of of tremendous depth and and feeling. Where do you want to put it? Oh. There? Let's zoom it out. One of the heart surgeons had been actually inside his chest. He said, we still don't know how your son survived. I remember sitting on the couch when I was pregnant and I was, you know, whatever, a week or two till delivery and, and thinking about like what name I would want to choose for this child. And I thought about Nisanel, which means God gives, even though at that point we had no hope for him to survive. That was how I wanted to feel. And then we chose the nickname Nissi, which means my miracle. And our approach was that every single moment is of infinite value. And so therefore, we're going to fight for every moment of infinite value. This is not just bad luck. That This is not just because nobody cares about me. But no, this is like from God. And not necessarily do I want to deal with it. Not necessarily do I feel like I can deal with it. But, but it's, you know, there's a reason behind this. We're going to just play it day by day. And to some degree, we still are doing that. I think that that's really the answer.